Good lad, good lad. What about you, sir? You know it, it has a So, how was it? How's it been for you tonight, training? Right, are you are you going with the seniors later? Uh, no. You're going to go now. now. You're in session now. So, when you come tonight, what do you look forward to? Uh, yeah. What about sparring? You were sparring. Do you like hitting your mates? Do you enjoy it? <laughs> what about you, mate? Yeah. I love, I love uh, boxing. It's like it's got. Um, uh, I used to get bullied when I was younger. As right. Boxing like changed, like changed everything. Right. So um, this is this is where I start coming out, and I've made so many new friends. Yeah. Like so so many. Like he, like he's one of my best mates. Ben over there's one of my best mates. Harry's a good mate. Uh, Jam's a good mate. No one's a good mate. I've got so many mates here now. So what what was the change for you for boxing? You said that when you started boxing. The bullying. Oh, yeah. What was it? What happened? What change was the change? Because, like, Tell the tale, Jack. No, no. Change because um, uh, they kept like eating me and things, so I, I hit them back obviously, yeah. and um, it like changed everything. Stopped, stopped completely. Um, where did you get the willpower? The wo where did you get the willpower to hit back? Uh, about. After like, after like a month or two months, I felt like 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 I
yourself more confident in myself. And boxing, boxing like opens your true self and it makes you, it makes you feel strong. So how was well, that bully? What happened? Did you hit the bully back in the end? I did. Hit him. What, what happened when you hit him back? Uh, he ran off and told the teacher. <laughs> Great stuff, great story, thank you. So Jack, we've just had one session already. What was that yeah. session about? Talk to that, us about that were the beginners, 9 to 13 year olds. Yep. Um, that's just an opportunity for, for for new kids to just come in and start, you know, um, so they're not they're not feeling overwhelmed. So okay. they can come where they're on a level playing field with other kids and I can teach them the stance and basic things like that. Yep. Uh, not all kids are a box, so that class is a class for those kids to go in there, keep fit, learn the skills without taking it seriously. Um, through that though, to be honest with you, we get kids that do start to take it seriously and then I move a bit of this class they have had. Yep. So, um, we've got some kids in here now that, that have come from that beginners. That, yes. that have been, they've spent a month or two in beginners and I thought they're too strong, too good, and I've moved them up. So. There was a little kick out earlier and he fought good left ups he was. Yeah, we've got some, got some good kids in that one. Just want to give them some time though, you know, I don't want to move them up until they're not just good enough, but they're, they're behaving properly as well. Yeah. I'm excited by them. Yeah. So, you know, so this next session we've got now coming up, what's this one? This one's the advanced juniors, so 9 to 13. The, a lot of these are, are, are car, medical cardiac boxers of England boxing. Not all of them are, but some of them are not far off. So th this group, this is where like a bit more technical stuff happens, the proper sparring happens. Like the beginners, we take it a bit steadier yeah. with them. But this one, they get proper sparring and they're training to fight in this one. Okay, uh, when you're doing that, what's your philosophy of, you know, if you're training to fight? Uh, in terms of knocking bells out of one another, what's your philosophy on that? Yeah, we, we tend to, uh, over the summer, I didn't, I didn't spar them as hard while they had a little break over the summer. Yeah. I didn't want them sort of getting fed up with sport, because uh, they had an hard season sort of end of the So what I do now is, I'm just stepping up a bit, but they're just doing like one hard spar a week, because I believe in like looking after their brains and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. Tonight you'll see they'll be doing a lot of body sparring tonight, tomorrow right. will probably be the hard spar. Right. We're doing a lot of technical partner work, uh, Yes. I think you can still you can still develop your skills from doing that, but it is important to do hard sparring. Um, we're just doing, we're doing that once a week at the moment until, until we get close to the season. There are some gyms that just do the body sparring. Yeah, like the Ingle gym. Yes. And it works for them, and I understand why it does. They will spar to head as well, yes. but uh, predominantly they'll spar to body. Um, we, do, we, do, we do have body sparring in here. Personally, I don't like doing too much of it because kids. I think kids get in bad habits. Yes, so they need to remember. Yeah, to keep their hands up. Keep your hands yeah, up. Yeah, otherwise they won't do it. They'll just, they'll just drop their hands. But the Ingles, they've done it, haven't they, for years, so it works for them. Well, then. Yeah. Okay. Hello. 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 <laughs> yeah. You're on BWTN Sports. Anything to say? That's uh, the uh, mascot dog of the training cave. What's the dog's name? Oscar. Um, oh, anything else you'd like to say, Oscar? Oscar. Anything else you'd like to say, Oscar? No? Who is it? Oscar. 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 Anyway, no chance of Oscar. Oscar. You got anything else to say? No. Canelo or GGG? <laughs> GGG? Canelo. Canelo? <laughs> That's a kiss. Thank you. Bye, Oscar. Uh, you're going to make yourself dizzy, by the way. You're going to make yourself really dizzy. Yeah, get the towel. So talk to us about these, these, these uh, tops. Yeah, so they're just like little vest tops and stuff that like excels and spare. They've got one that's strong for life. Yeah, because so that's like, that's what Jack believes in. And there's the picture of the dog there. Yeah, Oscar. The dog is Oscar. Okay, 
porn out of each other nice and steady. Thinking about protecting yourself to a body, right? What do you use to protect yourself to a body? Oh, Elbows. Elbows, yeah. I don't want to see your hands coming down like that. You have your hands tight, just take it close, let your body shots go, little slips, and keep them elbows tucked in, alright? Out here you're going to work on different moves. I'm going to tell you what you're doing each time. But because you've got your head guards on, I want it a little bit more realistic, nice sharp shots. Okay, so first one, just with your jabbing, when you're paddy and jab, and I'll tell you when to swap, alright? Don't be trying to trick each other with these moves, just throw it so your partner can practice defending, alright? Don't be trying to switch and throw one, or oh, nice solid jab there, fuck your chin, bring it back, move around the circles, alright? So start off with jab, paddy and jab, okay? It's not down to your muscles, it's down to this up here. Yeah. In your heart. If you can say yeah. you can do it, you can do it. That's it. If you believe you can do it, you can do it, can't you? Yeah. yeah. That's the sign, that's what you've got to be. Got a message to anybody out there who wants to become a boxer? Just train hard. Yeah? Simple, train hard. Isn't it? And what's the best thing about your training session? What do you like the most about your training sessions? Um <laughs> pad work. You like pad work? Yeah. Favourite punch? Uh uppercut. Favourite combination? Well, the uppercut, um, left hook. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very dangerous, man. He is dangerous. Call him Kid Dynamite. Like a little Mike Tyson. Okay. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take care. And your name, sir? Uh, Adam Rhodes. Adam Rhodes. Okay, Adam, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, man. Okay, so you were at the training cave tonight. Um, how long have you been here? Uh, pretty much since it opened. Yeah? Uh, and what would you have been doing had the training cave not been here? I used to train at another gym, but I kind of... Uh, a bit of a wall with that one. Yeah. We're more, this is amateur gym, obviously, and that yeah. more unlicensed. So. Okay. So tell us the difference between unlicensed boxing and obviously amateur boxing for you. Probably fitness, really, and a bit of greater fight. You know, sparring sessions with other other gyms. It's been a lot more intense, and you know what I mean. Okay. So what? When you come here, what's the best for, for you? What do you get out of these training sessions? It's inspirational, is Jack, you know what I mean? He, he, he fires you up, you know, he tells you what you're good at, you know, pulls you up on what you're not good at. And yep. Just makes you a better fighter. And what, makes, what do you think makes back Jack a good trainer? Probably experience, isn't it? He's been around the game for a long time. Yeah. So, 
knows, he knows a lot about it. So. Okay, yeah. and uh, for yourself, who's your favourite fighter? Shadow boxing. Probably at the minute, but Lomachenko is something else to watch. Isn't it? Lomachenko? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Golovkin versus Canelo, who wins? Uh, Golovkin, I think. You can Golovkin? I think he won last time. Canelo. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's like your feelings are moving around. Oh, yes, lovely. Don't forget your sprints as well to get your shot off. Good, lots of movement there. Lots of head movement, liking that. Liking the head movement, son. Liking the head movement. I'm just staying in one spot though. Move the feet. That's it. Move the hands beautifully, move the feet. That's it. Step around. So I'm just staying in the same spot. That's it. Very beautiful. That's it. Hit and move. Do your work, get out. Slip to the sides. Don't stay there too long though. Love that head work though. Lovely. Go on, Vet King. Big left hook. It's all that Russian power, go on. Come on. Try and jump with your opponent's going. Behind you, you've got to step it up again. Yeah, that right hand up, man, when you put your left. Come on. Yeah. Step out of there, man. Come on. Last 10 seconds. No, last 10. You can turn it on when you Right, can your name is? Chris. Alright Chris, how are we doing? I'm alright mate, sound yeah. Uh, good, one of Sweating. the... I always absolutely. I'm training. How was the yeah. session for you tonight? Yeah, they're learning a lot, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know what you've noticed, but from last season, things are starting to click more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said to you earlier, we've had them from nothing, so it's easier to make them develop when they're all learning on the same level. Absolutely. And I'm sure you've noticed that before. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? No prima donnas. They're all bringing each other along. Yep. And now it's starting to click. Do you know, do you know the one thing I like on seeing this gym is that everybody seems to respect everybody in there. Yeah. There is no prima donnas. And there is, for some young people, you know, let's be honest, home life isn't great. That's right. So when they come here, it's like home for them. Yeah, without a doubt. It's no, nothing worse than leaving your house. You're not having a great time at home. Crap time at school. Yeah. And you come to the gym and you've got a crap gym as well, yeah, well you know? We have got lads who's, who's had issues with losing parents, stuff like that, you yeah. know what I mean? But when they're here, it does give them that outlet, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I know, I mean, I lost my son, but I know if I didn't train, it'd overcome me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why, even at my age now, and I've always fought, I've always been a fighter. Yeah. So I'm used to training anyway, but I find it releases a lot of anger and a lot of stress. Yeah. And I think it's the same with, with, with young ones who, who are dealing with stuff at home as well, you know what I mean? It gives them more focus and takes their mind off it. So talk about how you became, uh, were you, this whole training uh, cave, uh, I know that... What it, what it was, I mean, I've, been, I've 
I fought my way in from karate to kickboxing. I boxed for five years. I did Muay Thai for 11 years. And I heard about this gym and I came down training. And I thought, well, I'm going to get involved now. I know because I'm 56 now. I believe it or not. I don't believe it. I asked Jack if he needed any help and he said, yeah, so me and Steve, one of the other lads, we've just done his level one, you know, England boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's basically how it happened, really. And I should have done it a long time ago, really. I should have put my knowledge forward maybe 10 years ago. What does it feel like being here, working with these kids day in, day out? Uh, it's a buzz. It's a buzz because when you go to a competition or you go to a boxing event, yep. and you see them perform and you see them have the bottle to get in that ring, because yep. the bottle's a big part in it, whether you're an adult, Absolutely. whether you're a kid, you know what I mean? If you've got the heart to get in there, yep. you've half a chance, haven't you? Yep. But then if we're giving them that technique and that belief and understanding, then you're doubling that impact. Yeah. Right? And it, talk, talk to me a bit more about this prima donna stuff. People come down to the gym and they're just not... They're not listening. How does that affect a gym? What's the impact it has on a gym? I don't think it's had any impact. Nobody's actually said that he's a prima donna, but yeah. you can see people looking, you know what I mean? And people that answer back. We, we get a lot of kids who answer back yeah. sometimes. You've probably not seen it tonight yeah. as you're filming. But it's a kid's thing, isn't it? We've yeah. all been kids, haven't Of course. And, you know, if, if they answer back at school, they're, they're, no doubt they're going to answer back here at some point. Yeah, yeah. But, to be fair, the ones that answer back, you have a quiet word with them. Yeah. They're, they're back to the business, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've had a couple of adult prima donnas, like I said, you know, before people that come down thinking they've done this and done that. Yeah. But they've been put under pressure or they've been, you know, been told how to reform the technique or do different things. Yep. You know, they don't like that. But you're going to get that in any gym. I've been around loads of gyms and you yep. always get that same. You always get that same thing, don't you? It's a matter of sorting it out, the ones that want it and the, the ones that don't. don't want it. Talk a bit about Jack the trainer. Um, Great lad. Yeah. Proper, proper good lad. One of the nicest lads I've ever met in my life. What does he bring to the area? What does he bring to the gym? Uh, I, th I think still for the area, it's still new and we, you know, we haven't had his own show yet. Yeah. We've got a show in December, we've got a show in February. Hopefully when we've had that and we've put on good performances and good shows, That'll bring more to the area, yeah. you know what I mean? So tell but us, so where, where is this place located? If people want to know how to get here. This is Bursal and if you're coming on out of Batley onto Bradford Road, going towards Bradford, you take the, I think it's a, the second left. Yep. And we're just in, in the uh, industrial estate there. It's so Unit 20 Training Cave, Bursal, rock on. So also, apart, also from that, talk to me a bit about not only the gym, but like, the sort of ages that come to the gym to work out? Yeah, well, we have a minis group, which uh, obviously, I think they're less than nine year old. Right. You know what I mean? They're the minis. Then we have the juniors, which you saw tonight. Then we have a seniors boxing group. And all this class that's coming in now, they're the ones that, they're not fighters as such, but they're doing boxing as a keep fit sort of thing. Okay. You know what I mean? But from yeah. there, if they want to fight, they've got to work hard and they might get invited, you know, to a technical boxing class. Right. That's basically how it works. Okay. Yeah, so, Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Good, relax your arms in front of you now. Arms and legs straight, you're going to do Superman. So you're going to bring your arms and your chest off the floor and your thighs off the floor. You're making an arch in your lower back, go up and down, like that. See, you'll feel it in your back. Clap in your butt. See, up and squeeze, split second, and then back down again. Go back up, let's get moving again, sharp shots, moving them feet, let's keep moving. How long have you been doing this? Uh, about eight weeks, I think. Yeah, you like it? Love it. Why? 
Uh, gets my aggression out. <laughs> ah, stay away, stay away. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. Uh, you know, so do you hope to fight with it? Yeah. You wanna? Yeah, I'm happy to. You wanna have a bit of a scrap, eh? Why? Oh, why? Okay, fair enough. Right. We'll enjoy. Using your feet, dipping your knees, bending your shoulders, dropping your shoulders solid. And then I like to see me, so that's one person. And I like to see me, so you're tapping knees and moving. All four. Right? So just start off, both hands to shoulders to start with. Alright? Keep bringing them hands up. means that you're dedicated. Yeah, well, I like to stay fit. Um, I like to punch things. <laughs> now, I know two girls that like to punch things, and they're both world champions. So, you know, it's pretty, pretty decent. The training that you get so much out of. Um, I don't know, it's more the motivation, encouragement you get from Jack. And yeah. Everyone's like a big family, and you yep. just encourage each other, like, even I'm like, oh, yeah. the again. So... Jack there. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been at the gym then? I think eight weeks, about eight weeks. Yeah, okay. And how have you found it for yourself? I mean, eight weeks being here. Well, my first session couldn't go three days. Yeah. 
But I just, I just want to come all the time. It's yeah. something I never want to miss. Like, right. I got a couple of weeks ago. I couldn't come for a week. I'm back to trying. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So you're addicted to it now? Yeah, I'm addicted. So, yeah, in terms of fighting, it's something you'd like to do? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely? Yeah. No, no. Even if you spar and get hit on the nose and like you don't like it. Well, I haven't sparred yet, so we'll see. But um, I think it's something I like to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. See, we'll see what you do. Face. Absolutely. Thank you so much. How do you feel after that? Glad I'm not doing it again. <laughs> so what's your first experiences of the training camp? Amazing. Amazing. And it makes me realise that it was such a long time ago I did this. And who told me you were doing pads last week? <laughs> <laughs> do you know the most important thing is here? And I always do this. When you sit on a couch and you criticise fighters and you don't come in the gym you don't work out, even this is tiring. Yeah. And I'm realistic to know, if I did this for a minute, and I went in there, a boxer will block, slip, block, and wait until I got tired. And then when I got tired, so slip in, body shots, work the ropes, bring it upstairs. Yeah, gotta respect the sport. And what do you think of Jack as an instructor? Oh, this is great. He's great. Come on, man. He's fantastic. <laughs> hey, the training cave. Check it out. Trainingcave.com. Uh, so, head coach of the training cave. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, how long have you had this gym now? Uh, the gym's been open now, coming up to about 18 months, I think, now. Okay. Yeah. So, what's been your philosophy behind the gym? There are so many positive reviews I've heard from people um, about the gym, the camaraderie, the way. The young people feel like it's a family here. Yeah. There's no Chris. I think it's Chris. Your yeah, he coach. the coach said that uh, you know there's no prima donnas here. No, no. Everybody is like respectful. And yeah. one of the things that he mentioned was key to that was everyone grew together. Yeah, they have done. So yeah. talk to me about this. Yeah. So um, the, the the gym, everybody who's, who's in the gym has pretty much been taught from scratch by us. Um, we might have some older people, some adults have come in from other other gyms and done little bits of boxing before. Yeah. But Everyone that actually fights for us has started from scratch. It's yeah. come from come from the beginning. I can remember teaching each one how to stand and throwing them the first punches yeah. and stuff like that. And it, that's how I wanted it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to start with any boxers from any other gym. I wanted to teach them my way. And like Chris says, everyone's come together. And like Chris, we're actually training here before we started coaching, so uh -huh. he was already in the gym, right. which makes it even better because uh, he, he knew our way. He knew what. He knew how things were going to work. 
you think having a professional boxing career has helped you or hindered you? Uh, oh, it, it's helped me. It's helped me. Uh, when I look back, I probably don't think I was the best pro, what, the best I could have been. Um, but the, my experiences in the pro game and what I learned and the people I met have helped me massively for, for this place. Like some of the stuff I learned along the way, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's helped me, not hindered. Yeah. The confidence to have to run a gym, to run it from as young as you run it, I think yeah. under nines was it, I was told. Pardon? Nine year olds and younger? You, oh, you coach? Fought, fought with the kids. Yes. Um, I started from six. Well, yeah, look at yeah. that. Yeah. So that, that, that's a, that'll be tomorrow night. So tonight, yeah, we, we, the youngest we took tonight were from, from nine. But we do, I have six year olds as well in on other nights. Wow. So, yeah. so, with that, what was the motivation for you to start so young? To start them so young? Yeah. Um, to be honest, when I first opened, I had it in my head, I just wanted to take them from like nine. But I had little ones turning up, whether we like brothers and sisters and stuff like that. And the class got so busy and like I was getting loads of messages about kids from six, seven years old wanting to start training. I just thought, well, I'll do do a, do a separate class with them. And I thought that at that age I probably wouldn't have good enough concentration span. But we've got we have got some good kids in this minis class and it's a six, six to eight year old. And I think I do think it's a good age for them, mm -hmm. even though it's another they, they can't be they can't fight until they're ten, at least they're getting some exercise and uh, right. And then they're learning how to defend themselves from a young age. But some of them in that class, if they stick to it, they could be very good. It's scary, I think they could have four years of experience before they even get in the ring. Wow, yeah. wow. Um, what's, the, what's been the, the, the highlight for you at this gym and the low point for you being at the gym? The highlight is there's so many of them. There's so many of them. Uh, uh, the, the highlight I'll talk about the most recent. We had a lad box on Saturday night, Freddie Phillips, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. And last season, I were, the club were unknown, so I was taking any fight. I was ringing everybody to try and get my lads fights, and they were getting probably overmatched some of them. And we lost, we lost a few, but we lost half, one half. And I was starting to question myself a little bit, but we worked hard over the summer, and seeing everything come out of Freddie on that Saturday night were like unbelievable. They were like magic, and that were that were a high. Um, in terms of laws, I really haven't got many. I've had the odd person I've had to chuck out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like Chris said, no prima donnas, and, I, and I'll stand by that. So, so when when does it become a situation where you feel that they, you, need, you need to make a you chuck a person out of the gym? Um, it's probably only happened not even a handful of times, to be honest. Um, I think people sometimes might just get the hint and not come back. But the ones that I've actually had to ask to leave, it's just rudeness, not listening. Maybe thinking that they know better than me and trying to undermine me a little bit, oh, talk dear. over me a little, you know, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who's just disrespectful, yep. um, or break, break any kind of rule. Yeah, okay. You tell them once, do it again. Tell them twice, do it again. So I, to find a new gym. I noticed that you wasn't one of these old school trainers in the sense it was all being right negative when you were training the fighters. There wasn't yeah. none of this old school you useless and no. all that sort of training you know no. that somehow these old school trainers used to think that if you treat net and talk negatively to a fighter yeah. it's going to motivate him to do more positive yeah. things maybe that works for some people but that, that like I say that's just not my style i like to the way i like to coach the kids especially is and the way i talk to them i try and treat them like adults in a way okay so they kind of they're on a similar level they know i'm in charge but they know they can talk to me about stuff if i tell them no they know no but yeah, I don't, I never have a go at them because it's an hard sport as it is mm -hmm. and I won't get on the backs about it because anyway, I see myself, I'm the coach, if they can't do something, that's my problem, I've got to make them, I, it's down to me to teach them. If I start having a go at them because they can't do something, it's just it's backwards thinking, isn't it? It's, it is. It's down, that's down to me to teach them. So no, I'm, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't rather them real, I'm not a, not a drill sergeant, I wouldn't have thought. The training case, strong for life. Yeah. Why the name? Training Cave? Right, so Training Cave, originally, because I started personal training in the basement of my house. And if you heard of the term, like, Man Cave, where yes. the man will go, that, that was like, Training Cave, train people down there, uh, take people on pads and stuff like that. So that's when I first started, before I started working out at gym, so I kept yep. that Training Cave name, and I got, I sort of bought the website and stuff, and I just had this long-term plan that that's just what I was going to do if I got the money. I had these dreams. And then, uh, the Strong for Life, that comes from, from my granddad. And it's my philosophy behind training. It's about staying fit, healthy, and strong for life. It's not just training for a holiday or anything like that. I'm training these kids for the rest of their life. What right. I do with them now is going to stand them in good stead. Um, 
the adults that I train, I do the same thing. I'm not training them for an holiday. If they're coming for that, they're in the wrong gym. I'm right. training you because I'm teaching you, and I want you to use the exercises I show you out of the gym. It's about it's about training for the rest of your life. So being strong, mind and body. So how do people so, get to know the gym and where it is and and more and and yeah. come along? How does that happen? Um, how do they find me? Yeah. So I mean, a lot of people like Google it or they'll see me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and I think a lot of recently it's probably word of mouth around here. Yep. Um, I used to advertise it a lot and spend a lot of money on Facebook because it does work. Um, but now I don't seem to need to, like you saw tonight. It's, yep. just, it's like a rolling. Kids go to school, they wear the t-shirts, they wear the hoodie, other kids hear about it, adults go, and it just spreads. It spirals. Word of mouth is the best advertising because yep. That's why we don't have, probably why we don't have any prima donnas because people will probably only invite. Yeah, of course. So uh, on social media, how do we find you? Um, everything's Training Cave, so Facebook Training Cave, Twitter Training Cave, Instagram Training Cave, and um, YouTube Training Cave. I've got a website, trainingcave.com. Everything links from that. I've uh, got like, little blogs on there that I've wrote about little fight write-ups and stuff like that, so you can, you can find a lot of stuff. Uh, message to a kid that's in the local area that might want to start boxing but a bit nervous about joining the gym. Yeah, I think just go for it and like you saw tonight, you know, the little girl get a little bit upset because she walked in a bit late and all the kids were training. If you're going to come, come a little bit earlier, you can chat to me and you can get used to being in the environment before everybody turns up. But you, you've got nothing to be scared about. Okay, and, and for girls, uh, what's the policy for girls? We want more girls. Yeah, we do have a lot of girls in as beginners classes, but I'd love to have a couple of boxers. I have got one who's on holiday at the moment. She's, she's actually a Thai boxer and she, she's wanting to come boxing. She also plays football for Leeds United. But I'm hoping okay. we can, she might come in. But yeah, we need more girls, so girls get yourself in.